Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I will be providing my book review of the book On Basilisk Station by David Weber, the first book in the Honor Arrington series. I am trying to delve into new parts of different genres, specifically science fiction. Fantasy and media tie-in fiction has been my bread and butter, and I, I love those genres, and I will continue to love those genres, and I really didn't get into science fiction outside of, like, Star Wars or Star Trek, except for maybe the occasional Timothy Zahn novel. And then I started thinking, well, what about other authors I could get into? <coughs> and then I got into Kevin J. Anderson. I got into a few others. And now I'm getting into David Weber. This is, as I mentioned, the first Honor Arrington series, his most famous series, and his most famous character from that series. And uh, I would say that this book reads like a C.S. Forrester novel meshed with like a Tom Clancy novel. It has that high-octane thriller nature to it, while at the same time feeling like a naval novel, but it's also set in space. Um, it is a, a, a science fiction novel. So it's a military science fiction novel, and really, this is a perfect example of how that subgenre works, because you get all the political nature, all the military nature, and all the sci-fi nature all blended into one excellent book. Um, uh, what makes this wor book work so well is the premise mixed with its main character. Honor Arrington is a goody two-shoes. She is an officer who will play by the book, and she will do everything the way she is told she is supposed to do it. So, she is one of these characters that is sent to Basilisk, this area of space, where she is to basically patrol and uh, handle everything as the, the, the leading military officer. Well, what they don't tell her is that nobody has ever taken that job seriously, ever. Everyone who's on that job has treated it like, like, like nothing. Like, so they, they just don't do their jobs. So as a result, everyone, all, all the merchant traders, all the people, the farmers, all the people who live in that area of space, they've not had to play by the rules for years. And so now all of a sudden she comes in and enforces every single rule. It's very frustrating. And so she makes a lot of enemies real quick. And yet you root for the goody two-shoes. There are a bunch of bad boy type characters here, but you don't root for them. You root for the goody two-shoes protagonist, which is really unique because so often fantasy sci-fi novels are trying to make you root, uh, uh, root for the kind of anti-hero characters, the characters who aren't necessarily the best guy. Uh, but here we have someone who is truly the most moral character we could find. She really doesn't swear often. She is trying to do the right thing. She plays by the rules. Um, she's not driven by rage or politics or even personal matters. Even when other people bring her family into things, she is not ruled by by her personal rage. Instead, she plays by the rules and does everything she's supposed to, and it makes her an endearing, lovable character that you want to root for. And it's kind of funny how some of the leaders in the Admiralty of the RM RMN start rooting for her as well, and it's kind of funny that they're kind of like, you know what, we don't mind this honor character. Uh, we're okay with her uh, uh, causing a kerfuffle over here. So all of that just makes for a wonderful premise. Then you have an ending that is just explosive and big. I would say the ending of this book has similar feelings to the ending of any other big action sequence movie or book. Like The Hunt for October has, it's a, I would say, a brilliant action set piece similar to this. Um, uh, maybe even uh, Star Trek uh, Into Darkness has, I would say, a similar action set piece at the end of the book. I just thought both of them were... The, the, the set piece here was set brilliantly, and you have a villain and a main character who are both hyper-competent individuals who are playing at their best game, who are very good at their jobs, and both of them are, do, are, 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 are fighting with whatever information they have. And what information they don't have, that's when they get into trouble and they have to guess. 
And it reminds me so much of the great Timothy Zahn novels that I've read over the years, where he tries to make Thrawn a hyper-competent character, but he tries to make the people Thrawn's fighting also hyper-competent. You can see how Timothy Zahn and David Weber make similar type characters um, between Honor and between Thrawn, and so it makes total sense that they would uh, collaborate on an, uh, a, a book series set in the Honor Arrington universe. Um, Timothy Zahn, I think, is a wonderful uh, comparison for David Weber in writing style. Um, they're both very different uh, in, in, in specific the ways they write dialogue and the way that they write action sequences, but in the way they write tone, the way they write atmosphere, the way they write characters and world building. That, in a sense, they're incredibly similar. <coughs> <coughs> so, as a whole, I really liked the book. The problem where this book... The, where this book stumbles a little bit is that Weber tries to give a subplot to all of the individual crew members present. And this is a problem that Star Trek books also have, where they will try to give every little crew member a little plot line. And it was just unnecessary, and it stretched the story too far. Instead, you can keep the books the same length, same word count, but redirect those words to be focused on the main characters. Give a little... Honor, surprisingly, doesn't have that much page time in the book. It's things going on around her. Give Honor more page time. Give uh, Alistair McKeon, great character, more page time. Give Santos, Lieutenant Santos, and Lieutenant Cardones, and Phil, Phyllis, villain, the villain, that other character, I can't say their name, uh, give them more page time. But don't just disseminate the the characters and also there were too many villains and too many people on the political stage she or, or, or this should have been really honor story with a few minor cast members around her and instead it was this huge sprawling story that just so happened to have a main character in honor and i think that weber tried to bite off more than he could chew i'm curious to see if in the future books of the series he actually um makes it work well. And I was nervous because I bought this book and the first seven novels in this series before I even picked up book one. That is incredibly rare for me. Usually I know, hey, I like a series, like I read one or two books before I buy a lot. So I was taking an awful risk. And if I didn't like this book, I'm stuck with seven books I didn't want. And then again, they're cheap. They were, I bought them at a used bookstore. So it's not like it was that expensive, but still, I was taking an awful risk, and yet it paid off because this book was great. I loved it. I also loved um, some of the political themes going on about conservatism versus liberalism and progressivism uh, versus reactionaries. And uh, you know, Weber doesn't reveal his personal political uh, uh, beliefs really. He all the factions have a little bit of egg on their heads. And all the factions have a little bit of merit. And he does a good job of portraying that. And there is never a point where you're like, okay, that's got to be the good faction. Because I totally agree with it. Like, they all have a little bit that they are wrong and right about. And so it gives them nuance. Nuance that most authors wouldn't give. And it's, it's so fresh to see that when so many science fiction authors are just like, conservative bad! Or, or liberal bad! It's just, it's nice to have that kind of nuance in a book like this. And also, uh, what's also nice is that there is an edge of familiarity to it. There's not a lot of alien races in this book. For the most part, it's all humans that you're dealing with. So even though it's a science fiction series, you're able to follow what's happening and you're not having to think about, okay, now now what kind of species is this and what's all this? It's, it's very clearly outlined. So... As a whole, I loved this book. I thought it was great. I give it an 8.5 out of 10. It is not a perfect book, but it is a very enjoyable book, and I'm really glad I read it. I cannot wait to read the rest, although I have to wait a few months to read them because my TBR is huge, but I really enjoyed this. So if you've read this book, let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Uh, which book in this series is your favorite? Let me know that as well if you've read more books in the series. But until next time... I'm Jonathan, and thank you for watching.